All right, welcome back to Comics Are Cool. The only, uh... Wow, what? that was... You want me to okay. do it? Want me to come in stronger? Big Geeky Couch. Big geeky. No, it's all right. Oh, we can catch... Oh, let me do it again. Okay, I love okay. it. Okay. <laughs> speak. Comics right. Are Cool, but... Welcome back to Big Geeky Couch, the only comic review show that's so good, I almost died for it. True story. With me today is David Lilly, author and writer of, author and artist on Dreamkeepers, Chad Perkins, host of Comics Are Cool, my earlier blunder, and Keith, co-host of Comics Are Cool, I'm Kit Jasper, mm -hmm. author and artist of False Start and other weird web comics. Today, we'll be reviewing Black Sad. It's awesome. It's really good. <laughs> they didn't say anything, so I had to keep going. There's, I, I, I just want to say real quickly that I'm happy that we're reviewing something that has a black cat in it because if you know my family, we know a little thing about a black cat. But what? continue. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 So <laughs> All right, sound off on opinions. Who wants to go first? Talking about a brack shad. It's the best. It's, it's the best. Okay. It, it All right. might be like one of the best comics ever made, as far as I really? can tell. Really? Wow. It's just the artwork Art is... by Juan Zagarnito, writing yeah. by Juan Diaz Canals. It's a Spanish comic, weirdly enough. Is it a Spanish comic? It is Spanish, yeah. Really? It's Spanish. Which is, but, it's, yeah. but it's published mainly in France. That's I what I was going to really say. Popular. Like, it's actually like as a French comic. Bon Destiné, as French comics are called. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I learned something new. So... It's that cool degree I got. Black handy. Sad really surprised me. Because I'll be perfectly mm -hmm. honest with you, when I was first getting into comic books... I passed this book up I, when I was one of the when I used to work at the comic. Well, shop. the cover's cool, but it doesn't do the art any favors. No, it doesn't. Because it, it doesn't show you just how like amazingly expressive. Hit cam. Hit cam. So <laughs> as a quick, cam. so a quick thing about Black Sad, it's an anthropomorphic comic. All the characters are animals, but it's played very straight. It's a noir comic about a detective. Look at that cinematic camera. Angle. Yeah, like that's a cool Dutch Dutch. What is that? A, uh, ant's eye view, bug's eye view, yeah. down there. It's all hand drawn and inked and done and colored in watercolor. And the reason they can get away with this is it's a European comic. This panel uses a zoom lens. What do you mean? Oh, like how like, it's got yeah, like that's a zoom lens. That's more of a wide angle lens. Like seriously, oh. there's cinematography in the panel art. It's well, and you know, Juanjo Garnito, he worked at Disney. Yeah. He was uh, the, he was one of the lead animators on Tarzan. Actually, oh. he was the lead animator for the character Sabor, who's the uh, really yeah the cheetah. Or whatever, no, the leopard. And if you look at how Sabor's drawn, it looks like a character from Black Sad. <laughs> That's so interesting. you you can really see it. It's a neat thing. And he worked he worked on one other, but Tarzan was the big one. Then he did this. Um, the reason they can get away with doing all this watercolor and stuff is because in Europe you do one page a week, really? as opposed to over here where you do twenty two pages a month, or in Japan where you do seventeen pages a week. These are general statistics on how you do comics, but that's why with manga, they're in black and white, lots of close-ups, fewer backgrounds. Everybody looks the same. Oh, yeah, because they, they just have to burn through them really fast. And but a lot over, of the stories are really, really repetitive. And Well, they're they're playing towards certain genres, and they're just they're trying to make a buck over there. It's, right, it's right. a different industry yeah. entirely. In Europe, though, they do... So if you actually look, the issues of Black Set are almost all 52 pages exactly. I never noticed. Yeah, but that's why. <laughs> just to let everybody know, Black Sad kind of follows the story of, well, John... John Black Sad. John Black Sad, who's a detective... Private, private investigator, yeah, yeah. Well, he's a lot... I, I Personally, I feel like he is way more than a private investigator. They get into some of that in the other two books, but the story isn't quite over. Oh, right. by the way. We are talking about Arctic Winter. Arctic Winter in particular, which every single Black Sad story stands on its own. Which is really nice. It's cool. Yeah, each one's a complete story. There is continuity between them, but you can read any of them in really any order. Exactly, yeah. So. And, I mean, they, they loosely, loosely tie in, but not enough where you're like, what is going on? Yeah, like, you can follow any of them. Like, you could give this to my dad, and he'd be like, hmm, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think, see, my thing was Black Sad really surprised me, because one, it was published by Dark Horse. And they don't really take, well, to me, I don't feel like they take too many gambles. A lot of these well, types of ever, stories. Ever since they lost the Star Wars license, <laughs> they, well, can't, they can't take gambles. Well, this is, bef after, this is, be this is before. This is while they right? still had the Star Wars yeah, license. So, yeah, so, and then I guess, oh, pardon me. Um, no. We'll, we'll cut that out. Uh, <laughs> we will not cut it out. Put it in we'll, twice. It stays. <laughs> uh, well, Black Sad, Black Sad shocked me because Dark Horse... They don't do a lot of these 
noir stories? Well, they, they well, I mean, they've got Hellboy, which is about investigators and stuff. It's not noir necessarily, but what you've got with Black Sabbath was it had already been released in the U.S. before under a different um, publisher, mm -hmm. so people already knew what it was, especially oh. people like me who wanted something like this. Now, this is the first three stories in one volume. Right. Initially, it was released as three separate volumes. I was trying to keep up a certain funny page. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Go find okay. the funny, sorry, funny page. But yeah, it's... I don't know, the story is, it's a really serviceable, straightforward, effective, like, mystery film noir. So yeah. if you like stories in that genre, this is, like, really, really fun storytelling in that genre. It's dark, it's a good mystery, and... It the watercolor work's amazing. Yeah, the watercolor's yeah. intense. Well, like, there's great lighting, cinematography, and I really like the fact that Black Sad, the character, He's got so such little dialogue, but they managed to make him a very likable, yes. engaging character yeah. with almost no dialogue. It's and you you well feel done. for him, like yeah. I think, and I feel like because each... he gets the shit beat out of him all the time, <laughs> but which each... is like that's what happens in noir. Each character has a very strong emotional attachment to them. Like there's no weekly's one... very likable. Yes, but... like each yeah, yeah weekly's that really weaselly. He's, he's a little weasel photographer. Yeah, and yeah. which thought... you're supposed to yeah. hate him, but he comes off ah. as very likable. But he's a, he's yeah. a great foil for Black Sad because Black Sad is just like very. very Grim, aggressive, yeah. serious, like straight to the point, and then Weekly is this like little fast talking, stinky motherfucker. So it's yeah. like it smells bad. they play yeah. off each other great. It's a it's a good good duo setup. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because black uh, and we yeah. Oh, yeah, you guys yeah, are yeah, like yeah, our own yeah. black. <laughs> yeah. Which ones are we then? Um. Yeah. You're know. the polar Dibs bear. On the white supremacist. Yeah. You're the, <laughs> I'll be the cool. German yeah. My Shepherd thing is guy. that this book <laughs> takes a lot of risks. Yeah. yeah. Just I mean, in each of its stories, right especially oh, Arthur. Like yeah, like right that? there. Yeah. We're not, yeah. you know what? <laughs> I also can't, really yeah, we like can't that. Put, we can't, we can't put that on. Oh, man. Yeah, you can't put that on the hand again. But I love <laughs> that. There's one mildly graphic set. I actually have a story about that. Yeah. Now, but later. I love that Arctic Winter dives into like these deep, like historic themes of racism mm -hmm. without, Pretty, seeming, without seeming really preachy and saccharine. Or offensive. Like, yeah. It's or, never. Yeah, it's just. I mean, I, I bet there's people be offensive by it. Too. I mean, They'd be like, well, he spent so much it. time people drawing these Ku Klux yeah. Klan members. He must love them. It's like, no, they're like on the page, so he has yeah. to draw them. Right. Well, yeah. I'll like, draw them worse because I don't like them. That just looks weird. Like, can everybody just remember that there was a character called the Hate Monger at one point in time? And he was wonderful. He was a great developed character. Look up Hate Monger if you really <laughs> want. A really <laughs> bizarre chapter of Marvel any villain history. To, any relation to Sergeant Hatred? Uh, she's close. To yeah, right. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, judging by the Venture Brothers people, so they might have taken. So, what did you think about Arctic Arctic Winter? I loved it. One thing about me, I am very big into uh, the mystery mystery styles, different types of uh, I don't know, kind of. I mean, detective, detective stories. stories. So, I, every Black I, Said short is is a detective I love, story. I so. loved it. So, I'm actually going to continue with reading. I just mm -hmm. didn't we got we got Will and one. We'll continue reading. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Cotton. Cotton was such a good standalone character. Like, Which one was Cotton? The the blind raven guy. Oh, and yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Like, the way they wrapped up his story was, it was like, like... whoa. It was like, suddenly out of nowhere, you're like, I suddenly care about this character now. Oh, <laughs> well, and I no. loved, what I really liked, too, though, is that that story tied in later. I, yeah. I also like the little things, too, with Cotton. How there... I don't remember exactly what panel, but he was popping up randomly in just about every scene. Oh, was he? Yeah, like that's, uh, a, that's a great like one right he's not yeah. like, <laughs> the uh, the um like total Batman pose. Like we know what that is, but man, it looks yeah. great. Look at oh, the yeah. Batman pose, and then look at all the detail in every single last building down and below. Then atmospheric perspective on the ones in the background. There's Cotton, by the way. There he is. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, like say. And then I've always loved this panel. This guy getting just punched so hard. <laughs> now, does he really <laughs> appear in every single panel? No, no, no I mean not every single panel, but he, he just shows up like a lot. in a lot of different scenes, like uh, the one that sticks out is the uh, when he goes to the um, drive-through. The drive-in uh, yeah. movie theater. There's, you'll see Cotton in the background. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, that. I never knew yeah. that. Nice. There is a lot of detail in every panel with Black Sad, and so as me and Dave, we talked about this beforehand, we both have read these multiple times. They're very good, very rereadable. Even though they're mysteries and you already know it, there's you will you will catch thing new things every time. They are incredibly. This series, and even when I was sitting on the on the couch. I just, I read through the entire, yeah. like, I didn't it, even put it down. Why would you, yeah, why like, would you be like, oh, this like, is awesome. I was like, dang, and each entire page was incredibly beautifully done. Yeah. Like, there was not a scene where I was just not captivated by the emotion, especially like, when, when it's all one dude, in the, man. In the first book, when he just points the gun 
Uh-oh. up to the, the, he's a frog, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The frog. And he's That's just, an amazing he sequence. Play, I was just like, <laughs> oh. You didn't read this one, did you? Well, no, he didn't read, I read, I read, Arctic. read Arctic. So the other thing is, even the at. panels and the, um, the lettering, that's all done with, that's done with gesso. That's not done digitally. What he does is in advance, he, he puts what's known as gesso down across the watercolor paper and then peels it off when he's done. Oh, you can really? see, like, you can see, like, see the little bits that come out. That's also how he does the edging. No kidding. Yeah, I've, I've done it before. It's really time consuming. But yeah, I think... The lettering itself is done digitally, but the actual word balloons and paneling... And there's no panel borders outside of the white. There's no black yeah. border, you'll see, so... Hmm. hmm. That, and that, that's what's known as... They use gesso for that. Yeah. Yeah. But this is some of the best Anthro artwork I think that has ever been done. Like the the animals like really do a great job of being like... Every animal looks different. Yeah. They're very expressive. And they're not just cartoon yeah. animals. They're really effective like uh, satire. What's it called? I'm having a brain fart here. Caricatures? Yeah, caricatures. caricatures. Like every animal is like a really good caricature. Cause as soon of as what you, we think of those animals. Yeah, or no, right. you can you can see some of those animals and you're like, oh, I've seen people just like yep. that. You'd be like, that's what that yeah. guy'd look like if he was blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> So I like for me this rises above being just like oh it's a great comic I think this is an iconic comic absolutely I agree yeah. it's one Eisner's for a reason it's got like a recommendation from Stan Lee on the front saying as good as it gets so. well I think this right here should be a staple in anybody's collection of comics what if you if you want, want if you want to be if you want your ser- if you want your uh, collection to start being taken seriously Black Said's a good place to start absolutely yeah. and it's a great oh go on it's also yeah, someone who who dabbles very very infrequently, I would definitely call that a pretty good beginner, to be it's honest. another one you could even get your parents yeah. to read, too. And yeah. it's a great one to sit there when somebody laughs at you and says, Oh, comics so, aren't serious. Uh, comics yeah. aren't serious. You just throw that at them, they get hurt, and then they read it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a hard back. Especially with this heart. Yeah, it's cover, a hard like, back, so. Look, look at this. It <laughs> is. <laughs> it's tough. It's You're, great. Dude, I recommend Black 30 Sad. 30 bucks for this one, too, so... I yeah. recommend Black Sad. It's also great if you're a comic artist and you want something to, like, inspire you, if you want something to look up to. Or to work towards. Yeah, something, <laughs> something that, like, motivates Which you. Which you will like, never get there, but that's okay. Look at what oh, could oh, be done. Like, this is bad. this is great. This is great inspirational fuel. So this, is, this, is the Adam, this is the Adam Ross, the Alex Ross of... Uh, Anthro comics. Are, are we gonna see some art like this in the next Dream Keepers? Uh, I mean, when, I'm, 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 I'll, I'll aim for it. I can't guarantee I'll hit it, but I'll aim at it. I will be watercoloring False Start eventually. So. Oh, really? Oh, yes. okay. It's already mostly traditional. What I need is a, I need a large format laser printer. So oh, I got gotcha. you. To, to do my weird so, system, but <laughs> guys, that was our opinion on Black Sad. I think around we everybody liked it. Everybody recommends it. If you have between all of us, most of us have already read most of it. The rest of us are going to continue reading yep. it. This is our highest reviewed comic to date. Exactly. So, so should we should we call it something new since this is the first time that's ever happened? Combo yeah. breaker. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Well, what we can do is it sets the precedent. We'll be like, was it as good as Black Sad? Was it? A- well, was, yeah, this might be like the high. This is our high. Mar- this is our high yeah, water yeah. mark right now. Let's see if we can get any. <laughs> and like, not only because. Individually, we thought it was so good. We all collectively thought it right, was so exactly. good. Right, exactly. So, can ever, if we can ever agree something is better than this, that's crazy. And when we do a review, too, we don't talk about it until we do this. Yeah, and which is hard for me. <laughs> yes, it's very hard for all of us. <laughs> but I want to talk about comics. So, it's, when it comes to this, this is actually kind of a shocker for us. But, guys, I think our next book is... Shudder by Shutter. Joe Keating and Layla Del Duca. And, yeah. by God, do I got a lot of things to say about Shudder. So, I have nothing to say about Shudder. So tune in to the next episode of Big Geeky Big Couch. Couch. Bye. Be there. Huh. <laughs> 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 okay. It's <laughs>